Morning Meditations with God radio ministry brought to you each morning at the same time by the generous and loving members and friends of the Midwest Church of Christ. The Midwest Church of Christ is located at 2115 Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. We like to extend to you and to your entire family a warm and loving invitation to come and be with us in Garland Avenue here in Louisville, Kentucky. Our order of services include each Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. is our first worship of the day. Then at 9.30, we have our Sunday Bible School. And at 10.30, we have our second worship of the day. On Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible study prayer and devotional services. Our first session is at 10 a.m. in the morning, and our evening session is at 6.50. That's 10 minutes before 7. If you would like to study the Bible with the comforts of your own home, we have two ways that you can do that. One is the um, Bible uh correspondence course that you can take by mail. The second is uh, the personal hand, uh, uh, study where someone will come and uh, sit down with you and study the Word of God right in the comforts of your own home. Either way, you give us a call at 774 39 Eight, six, and we'll register <clears throat> register you today. In other announcements, coming up this Saturday, June June the fifteenth, uh, at ten thirty at ten a.m. is the Clip Ministry, the Christian Life Improvement Plan Ministry. Increase your family financial well-being by attending the Clip Ministry with Brother Robert Fry, who is a Dave Ramsey certified uh, financial counselor, and certainly you will be doing good uh, to to be with him. He will he will give you uh, the information needed for your. Um, uh, financial well-being. So come out at um, come out at the uh, time of uh, uh, at ten o'clock. Then um, the Geraldine Williams Vacation Bible School 2019 uh, will be Monday, June the seventeenth uh, through Thursday. June the 20th. We hope that um, all of you will make plans to those on Radio Land and Facebook Live. We invite you to come uh, as my special guest for the uh, Vacation Bible School. Uh, there'll be a door knocking in our community tonight with the um, um, for the uh, Vacation Bible school, and we want you to make sure that you are with us and and that um, you come and help invite young people uh, to the um, uh, vacation Bible school. Meet us at the church house at six um, a six p.m. tonight and join with us as we go into the neighborhoods. And uh, get the people um, and children and adults to come to Vacation Bible School. That meeting, that door knocking will also be on Thursday, um, June, the, uh, uh, June the 11th, uh, this Thursday, um, uh, June the 13th, this Thursday, and uh, June the 15th at noon. Uh, 
So make sure you, you come out and uh, uh, let's do door knocking. Praise be unto God. The annual church picnic will be um, on Saturday, June the 22nd, starting at um, uh, 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. We need all decks on hands to get prepared for a great time in the Lord, having fun with our children and uh, one another. So let's come out to our vacation Bible school. The next meeting for the uh, 2020 jail and prison meetings, uh, uh, meeting will be on the 24th. Uh, of June. So we want you to come and and help us uh, getting prepared for um, the uh, uh, 2020 National Jail and Prison Workshop. The sixth annual Education Freedom Day Prayer Breakfast, uh, Tuesday, uh, July the 16th uh, from 8 a to 9.30 a.m. The honorable speaker is Dr. Wayne Lewis, State Commissioner um, of, of Education here in Kentucky. He is our guest speaker. We are asking all members of Midwest to make plans to attend. We are asking all for donations of $75, we will accept uh, smaller uh, or more. We want you to be there. And uh, we hope that uh, you will do what you can to be with us. Praise be unto God. And um, the Village Learning Center is taking up applications is taking up applications uh, for uh, the, the um, inner city day camp um, that is going on at Midwest, our summer day camp. And uh, you don't want to have your children to miss this. It is so important uh, that they increase their academic skills as well as receive good uh, uh, Christian education. So we are looking forward to you uh, enrolling those children into the summer day camp. The Kids Cafe meets on Thursdays at 5 p.m. The, ca the cafe provides a healthy meal along with physical and educational activities. When we need volunteers to help us with this uh, important ministry, and uh, we hope that you will hear the call and uh, certainly uh, uh, make, make plans to come and uh, be with us. In area-wide news, the, the uh, 36 in Garland Church of Christ uh, is having their uh, gospel meeting uh, on June uh, the 23rd um, uh, through June the 26th. Brother Cleavon Matthew is the revivalist um, and uh, out of Ohio. And uh, to kick things off, they will have a song fest Saturday, June the 22nd, starting at 5 p.m. Make sure that you get these two events on your schedule and let's support the... the uh, uh, the, the churches of Christ in our area, let's help uh, promote the kingdom of God.
Now I want to <clears throat> want you to remember our sick and shut in. Want to remember uh, Sister Jackie Hallman, Sister Ethel Rivers, and Sister Don Marie Sizemore. Um, also, we want to pray for the mother of Brother James Malone, uh, uh, Sister Baby Joe Weaver. Want to keep her in our prayers. Also, Sister Ora Sims, the mother of Brother Keith and Sister Anya Keith Sims, and Brother and Sister Anya Lawson, and the brother of uh, Brother William uh, Robinson. Keep her in prayers and let God uh, uh, do his thing uh, in healing and making things good for their, for their lives. We, and we know that he can. Praise be unto God. I uh, want to remember Brother um, Freddie Holland and Brother Johnny Miles and Sister uh, Dorothy Miles. Brother Angelo Pentegrast, um, and our shut-in, Sister Mamie Cartwright, Sister Louise Covington, Sister Sarah Cowan, Sister Mary Hunter, Sister Pearl Smith, Sister Mary Wood. Pray for Brother James Frazier, and keep Sister Bertha Frazier in your, in your prayers as she cares for her, as she uh, is caring for our beloved brother, uh, James Frazier. We want to <clears throat> remember those who are going through dialysis and radiation and chemotherapy. want to pray for those, uh, um, our dear friends, Sister Jessie Bennett, Sister Dar uh, Darlene Hayes, Sister Angela Wall Gill, Sister Sheila Heiner, Sister Sandy Hammond Schuler, there in Evansville, uh, Sister Rita Kamishi, and I was special prayer for our dear Sister Paula uh, Thomas and uh, Sister. Um, Dolores House um, and uh, Sister Sarah, the daughter of Brother Clark and Sister Ellen Stannard. Keep them in our prayers. Ask God to give them what they need to heal. We, we, claim, you know, we claim the healing of the Lord our God. We also want to remember Brothers Jasper Crenshaw, Brother Richard Rose, Brother Gary King, Brother Frederick Hines, Brother Marvin Stevenson, Jr. Continue to pray for these. Ask God to, to heal them. We want to give thanks to those who supported the radio ministry this week. We want to say thank you to Sister Linda Bird. Brother Alvesta Curry, Brother Tony and Sister Chiquita Curry, Sister Clarice Floyd Johnson, Sister Marceline Marshall, and Brother James Malone, uh, uh, Sister Angelica Robertson, and Brother Clark and Sister Ellen Stannard, uh, Brother uh, Kevin Stevenson, Sister Joey Stevenson, Brother Stephen Terrell, uh, Sister Elaine Watts, Sister Marilyn Wester, Brother Matthew Wester, and our dear friends, Brother David and Sister Rita Kamishi. Thank you so much. And uh, want to say happy birthday to... Uh, Brother James Fowler, uh, we are just thankful uh, that uh, God has blessed him 
on the 22nd. So let's keep on the 12th, rather. So that'll be tomorrow. All right. Praise be unto God. Now let's, let's go to our God in prayer. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Before the mountains were ever brought forth, or even before you created the world, you were God. You consulted with no one, but you were able to pledge to yourself what you would provide for every person of your creation. And I, I can testify, O oh God, not one thing that you have promised that you have not delivered. And I am so thankful that whatever, whatever you have delivered, you have to promise to us, it will come to pass. And now, God, I, I, I bring before you those that are uh, getting up early in the morning. Rise, rise up with the sun to hear your voice. As we look out our windows, we see your light creeping in to our day. That is the only, that is the only way that we can see the daytime is that you reflect your power into the sun and causes it to bring light and warmth to the earth. It's you, O oh God, and it's us, O oh God, as we stand in need of prayer. We bring our sick and shut in, those going through special treatments. Lord, I am fully confident that you are able and that you will comfort their souls. And oh God, we pray for every workplace, every individual, homes, that the home will be better by the home lifting up the morning meditation with God. I thank you today, oh God. Be with those who are sick. Be with them, oh God. Those that are in the jailhouse, I pray for them. Lord, go with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Now, now let's open up our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the first division. The book of Psalms, the first division. The Bible, the word of God says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye, blessed are they that, uh, that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say, all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice. Rejoice, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophet which were before you. Now let's open up our Bibles to the book 
of Galatians. The chapter is 5 and the verse is 22 and 3. The word of the Lord says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, our kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. Against such there, be, there is no law. Tuesday, June the 11th, 2019, our daily devotion entitled, The Fruit of the Spirit. The Fruit of the Spirit. An examination, an examination of the fruits of the Spirit can be intimidating. Working all, uh, amen, working all uh, nine of these traits also will, uh, 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 into your life uh, seems impossible. When you look at these, you say, oh man, I can't do this. Indeed, it is sometimes overwhelming. But the moment you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit begins a divine work uh, uh, in your life to, pro to produce Christ-like character in you. Regardless of who you are, the Spirit works from the same model, Jesus Christ. The Spirit looks to Christ in order to find the blueprint for your character. The Spirit will immediately begin helping you experience and practice the same love that Jesus had when he had laid down his life for his friends. The same, the same joy he experienced will now fill you. The identical peace that guarded a man the heart of Jesus, even as he was being beaten and mocked, will be the peace that of the Spirit that works uh, into your life until you have this character like Jesus. The patience Jesus had. Amen. For his most unteachable disciple will be the patience that the Spirit now develops in your life. The kindness Jesus showed toward children and sinners will soften you. Amen. Soften you where your heart will be towards others. There will be a goodness about you that is only re, re, the example uh, that uh, Jesus had in the spirit of his character. My brothers and sisters, the spirit will build the same faithfulness into you that led Jesus to a, a man to be entirely obedient to the Father. Yes, the Spirit will teach you self-control so that you will have strength 
to do what is right and to resist the temptations. And so is the reading from the book of the Lord, the book of Psalms, the first division, the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 3 through 12. And here in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, and the verses are 22 and 3. Now let's go to our featured study. Found in the book of Revelation, for those of you that are, that are just joining with us, we're studying out of the book of Revelation. We're already here in chapter 20. Uh, I pray to God that you have got a, a deeper understanding of the, the book of Revelation, which is a book written in signs, symbols, and types. It is a book uh, with the revelation of the Lord Jesus. And uh, uh, it is a book uh, that uh, provides the full evidence that the Lord prevailed in heaven against Satan, that he was kicked out of heaven, thrown down, into the abyss and loosed to be able to come and, uh, and tempt uh, the people of God in this generation. But he may, he's mad because he knows that his time is short. It ain't going to be long. Uh, I had uh, us to deal with to start reading this morning at verse 12, but let's just go on back for continuity's sake. Uh, start at verse 11. Revelation chapter 20, and we'll begin at verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that set, up on, set on it from, the, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and uh, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the, and the books were opened. And another book uh, was opened, which is the book of life. And uh, the dead was judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. I'm going to stop right there. The Hebrew writers ask the question, how Shall we escape if we neglect the salvation, the great salvation that has been given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ? There is no other escape except you take the straight and the narrow road that Jesus who is now <clears throat> sitting on the right hand of the throne of God. My brothers and sisters, the heaven and earth are going to pass away, but the word of God is going to abide forever. That's why your life needs to become the walking, living Word of God. Oh, God wants you to know that you are his epistle. The Bible says, 
Jesus in the 17th chapter of the book of uh, John, the book of John, he says around verse 17, he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. God says, Jesus is the word. The Bible says in, in John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. I I give you this picture. I this now I want y'all to get this now. I want you to get this. This is the picture that Jesus, this is that sign that Jesus is wanting to pit, put you in front of people as the word. I'm going to show you this. In the Bible says when you speak of the word you speak of Jesus. I want you to know Jesus wanted you and me to have that same kind of uh, principle in our lives. Now, let me show you what I mean. In the book of 2 Corinthians, the chapter is 3. Listen to what he says. Do we need, do we begin again commending ourselves or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Look at verse number two. He says, for ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and what read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, manifested by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but look ahead, but fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust we have through Christ, through Christ to God word. My brothers and sisters, when people see you, they ought to see Jesus. They ought to see the word of God walking among you. You, you are the evidence of the word of God. You're the manifestation that's what God, that's what God is wanting each one of our lives to be able to reflect that we are God. When, when people see us, they, they see God. They're because, you know why? Because we have taken on the word of God. Your life, your life is being watched is being watched by every person. And so this is what God is saying to you. And that is your life need to be like Christ. The, the heavens are going to pass away, but God's word is going to be there forever. Children, his word is going to be there. So what is, what is verse 12 say? He says, and I saw the dead, small and great. Listen to what he is saying, children. He says he saw the dead. He saw the dead, small and great. And, and they stood before God. And the Bible said the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were, were judged out of those books which were written in their books according to your works. This ought to be a sobering
there, there are the presence persons who are going to stand before God and be judged. Brothers and sisters, do you realize the significance of you obeying the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ordinary men and women are going to be judged. Those who are, amen, the average and common people of the earth, the blue collar worker, the employer, employees and workers of the earth, they shall all be judged. Those who are, uh, amen, the slaves and servants of those in the world, they too shall be judged. Those who uh, can uh, commit the sins that society considers somewhat small and sometimes un understandable sins of selfishness and hoarding and backbiting and complaining, laziness, slothfulness, indifference, aging, gossiping, backstabbing, all criticizing. There's people who think they're in God has put them here for them to be the worst they to be the worst critics or criticizer. That you just you hold everybody hostage. So if you're a small person, let me be clear to you, you're going to be judged. And uh, great men, those of you who consider yourself a great man, a great woman, you too going to be judged. Those who are uh, in position of authority and managers. See, see, let me be clear to you. When you're in authority and you treat people bad, do you understand that God, God is watching you? Oh, you want some Bible. Okay. All right. Let me give you some book, chapter, and verse. Y'all, y'all act like, y'all act like I'm making this thing up. Well, I'm going to take you to the book of Romans, the 13th chapter. Biblical students knew what I was, was talking about. But those of you that are not a biblical, a daily biblical study, if you keep watching this, you will be one. Because that's all I preach from. It's from this. Listen to what he says. Let every soul be subject to higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers, the powers that be are ordained of God. And what and whosoever therefore resisteth the, the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall uh, receive to themselves damnations. For the rulers are not a terror to good works. But to the evil, wilt thou, wilt thou then not be afraid of the powers? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is a minister. Amen. For he is the minister of God to, to thee for good. God put all authority. He put it all authority in, 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 in our lives for us to be subject to authorities, to the laws of the land. And for those that God has blessed to be in these kinds of positions of authority, God's going to hold you accountable. If you treat people bad, I'm just here to tell you, you know, you don't play games. You don't play games with people's lives. 
And I'm praying. I'm, I know there's some of you that are watching this. You're, you're, you're in positions. Be, be clear. Don't play games with people's lives. You do right with people. Yes, every believer, every unbeliever on the face of this earth will stand before God and be judged. I don't care how, how, uh, uh, I don't care how important you, uh, uh, you think you are, how small you think you are. If you are an unbeliever and you have not obeyed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm here to tell you, you're going to be judged. Every believer, every believer, and every unbeliever will stand before God. Now listen. The small and the great, the low and the high, the poor and the rich, the unrighteous, and the self-righteous shall stand before the judgment. The non-religious, you know, you got a lot of people in our generation. They, they proudly say, well, I don't believe in that, all that religious stuff. Well, let me tell you who does. The Lord Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Pure religion, undefiled before God, is to visit the the the, the widows and their and the children in their affliction. God says, God knows He has provided everything that people need. And he has helped you to be what you are. I don't care how big you are, how small you are. Everybody will stand before God. The scripture says in Romans 2, verse 16, in the, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Everything comes down to the gospel. Everything comes down to the gospel. He says, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Jesus said, in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36. But I say to you, unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. My brothers and sisters, listen to me. You got to be careful what you say about people. Why? Because there's going to, there's some books. There's some books. God ain't coming there and judging you and a man uh, without evidence. They, as the, he, he came as uh, your, your lawyer. The amen to bring you to Christ. But I come to tell you, he'll be your judge and prosecutor in the day of judgment. And he'll present the the uh amen, the the uh uh evidence that you have uh, uh created. And where will they keep these, this evidence? In some books in heaven. There are some books in heaven. 
my brothers and sisters, there are some books in heaven. There are some books in heaven and everything we say and do down in this earth is written in those books. You've got a book. I've got a book. Everybody's got a book. And everything you say is going to be brought up against you. Yes, the Bible says, and the books were opened, and another book opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. There are two kinds of books in heaven. Both will be present at the great white throne judgment. The book includes names of everyone who has ever lived or ever will live upon the earth. God longs for everyone, everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. God doesn't want you, anybody, to be lost. But you must obey the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is absolutely no other way to escape the judgment. Amen. My brothers and sisters, you're writing your obituary. And your obituary, your obituary at your funeral is, 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 the, is, is, is the very thing that you will have to take before God. And I pray to God today that you, those of you, that are not members of the Church of Christ, the body of Jesus Christ of the Bible. The gospel is what you need to obey. You, you, you obey the gospel. The, the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to replicate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the way you do that is through the power of baptism. Luke, my Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 8. You need that. You need that. That's that first resurrection that we've talked about. Some are going to come be, be resurrected to the resurrection of, of death, and that is the second death. And uh, uh, some be reckon you're in the book of life. When you obey the gospel, God writes your name in the book of life. And the only way you can take that out is, is for you to fall away from the truth. God bless you this morning. And I hope that you're that you're 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 learning from these studies and uh, May God be with you. 571-1240 will open up the prayer line. And if you would like to have prayer, you give us a call. Uh, Sister Karen White is still there in, in uh, uh, Texas and uh, soliciting our prayers. And certainly that's... Uh, that is a, a blessing for her to go down and be with her, her brother, uh, Charles. And uh, I know that uh, they will enjoy one another. And uh, if you need prayer, the prayer line is open. And we need only to have you call five. Uh, 
Let us pray together. Let us call upon our God. Again, tonight, Midwest, I need you to get some of your young people come out. We're going to go and sign up uh, um, people for children and adults for Vacation Bible School, which starts uh, next Monday, the 17th. So make sure you come and uh, be, be with us with, with that. 571-1240. 571-1240. We'll pray with you and we'll pray for you. Hello, caller. This is Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Amen, sister. Thank you for continuing mind of how to stay in the word. So God, for this woman, things going to help. Amen. Things happen to me in these trials times that I'm going through. And ask you all to continue to pray for one another. Amen. <clears throat> Have a blessed day, brother. God, God bless you. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. 571-1240. Sister Linda uh, Bird is act pray for Sister Nancy Walker as she uh, cares for both of her parents. Oh, uh, I'm I, I, I'm sure that is a that is a task. Uh, um, but we're thankful to God that uh, um, she. Uh, uh, has the love to to desire to do that, and uh, we we are so thankful uh, for, uh, and we ask God for the strength that she needs. And there are others who are talking, uh, who are caring for their elderly parents, and um, we hope, trust, and pray that you will. Um, uh, uh, praise God. Hello, caller. This is uh, uh, Brother Stevenson with the Midwest Church of Christ. Can we help you? Yes, praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Stevenson. This is Sister Mormon. How you doing? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. And how is Sister Mormon? Amen. He's doing right now and for what he's going to do because I've got his word and I've got his promise. Praise the God. I stand on his word, Pastor, when I can't stand on my feet. And, and that's good news. That's real good news. That's good news regardless of my circumstances. I enjoyed that summer this morning and I want to pray for all our children. Amen. And, and you have a great day and I love you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Oh, five seven one twelve forty. If you would like to get your prayer request in, uh, you give us a call. Uh, Sister uh, Marilyn Wester, continue, please, to pray for me and my family. I have a, a cousin who is being bat, uh, who is battling cancer. And, and, and I'm asked in prayer for them. Brother Shimwell said, pray for my daughter Whitney dealing with the weather there in Dallas. Amen, amen. So let's pray for young Whitney. We are proud of her uh, 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 getting under her wings and, and flying. We know God is able. Um uh, Five seven one again. I I solicit your prayers for my sister Paula uh, Stevenson Thomas. Sister Paula has a very rare cancer, and um, it's going to take prayer. It's going to take prayer. 
And we need we need prayer for for her. This is a serious serious time right now, and uh, we ask we ask for you to keep our baby sister in in prayer. Praise be unto God. Uh, would you bow with me? Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you for being our God and our Father. That we could come unto you and call you Abba Father. Lord, thank you. Thank you for, sister, for those who have called and those who have sent in their messages. I pray, pray for all of them. In the name of Jesus, amen. My time is up for today. I've enjoyed being with you. I look forward to being with you again on tomorrow. Until then, know this. Our God loves you, and so 